Welcome back to Flipping Dreams. I'm your host, Heather Renee May. And this episode, you get to meet the beautiful Diana. Oh, wow. We had an amazing conversation. Diana has continually pivoted in her, in her life from a degree in engineering in Columbia, but yet still having a dream of being a journalist, to moving to another country without speaking the language, getting a job in banking, working ultimately as an engineer, uh, and then becoming her own business owner. Uh, she just, her, her beautiful outlook on life and I absolutely share and love her passion for minimalism and uh, I think you'll really enjoy listening to her not only she has a beautiful accent but just a beautiful vision as well so I hope you enjoy this talk with Diana Oldnick and you are listening to Flipping Dreams. Hi. Hi Diana. Hi how are you? I'm good I'm good how are you? Good. It's very nice to meet you. How is everything going? Oh, everything is good. It's wonderful to meet you as well. Yes, um, thank you. It's a beautiful thing and I appreciate a lot this opportunity. I'm very thankful and I say, I also have a podcast and I say that from the millions of people that are in the world, we actually got to connect each other. So it's something extremely special for me and if this is happening, it's for a special reason. Even if it seems like we record it and goodbye, and no, that this very moment is actually special. So that's how I embrace these uh, interactions. And I always know that whoever you know, I'm gonna get to talk to, it's like a miracle. <laughs> oh, it's so I love that's a beautiful way of putting it because I think we can take it for granted that um, we have all of this, these tools in this way mm -hmm. to communicate online. But um, I agree with you. Uh, since I've started my podcast, these conversations I've been having, um, I sort of think of them like you and I are sitting in a room having a cup of coffee or a cocktail, Yay. and mm -hmm. we get to share and talk about you know our journeys and just mm -hmm. get to share um, encouragement and support to other people mm -hmm. who are considering making transitions and navigating changes mm -hmm. in life, no matter what stage of life. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's really, it's really exciting to, to get the opportunity to talk to you. Yes. Thank you. It's beautiful that traditionally, traditionally in our lives, we tend to make differences between other people that we see that it seems that we don't know them, right? Like we don't see, hi, how are you? Because we see, no, it's a strange, a strange person. But in this platform, we speak with people from other countries that we've never seen before. And we don't have any restrictions to say, hi, how are you? And it's normal. It's so, so true. It's so true. And like, so you are actually, you're in Canada right now? Is yes. That right? So yeah, so we uh, like the chances of us meeting... <laughs> Mm -hmm, exactly. I'm in Alabama, <laughs> and, oh, yes. you know, but you never know. You never know. Yeah. Um, yes. And so, yeah, it's really nice to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to, to meet like this. Um, yes. I, how do you pronounce your last name? Is it Olenik? Olenik. Yes. Olenik. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, uh, well, first of all, you know, welcome to Flipping Dreams and i um, super happy to have you here. And I really am excited for you to share your story um, with my listeners, um, flipping dreams again is all about transforming, uh, you know, flipping what you thought mm -hmm. was one, you know, the dream and maybe it isn't, mm -hmm. maybe it didn't work out and you've got mm -hmm. to shift and pivot mm -hmm. and trying to help people just do that and have encouragement and hear other voices of people mm -hmm. who are doing it and have done it and are just have an amazing life. So, um, yeah. Okay. Everything is started. I am actually from Colombia, so I'm from South America, and I, since, like, I remember, I, um, I was born in a kind of like a, you know, it's a very uh, affected country, and um, uh, there is a lot of uh, poverty and the situation. Um, affected also my parents uh, so this is to say that I come from a very uh, poor family and I struggle a lot um, 
to find my own way because when you see limitations in your parents, that is what you have in your mind as limitations for yourself too. Mm. And so without seeing, you know, like other alternatives, I, when I went to school, I happened to go to a just female school with nuns. So I was raised in a Catholic environment, a traditional environment. And also the environment was, I would say, maybe a little bit restricted and very traditional. So again, that was another reason why my limitations were always there very well in place. So um, I finished my, my high school, but I, before I finished, I remember having this very first confusion about what I'm going to do in my life. Because in my country and with my conditions, my, origi my original conditions, we didn't have that option of, yeah, my parents are going to pay for university, or I can go and work and then pay for my university. Really, it was very, very tough. So um, I was lucky enough that at the end of the school, there is um, an, a national exam, and there are public universities in the country. So if you get a couple of, you know, like good score or, or um, other situations, is the, the category is like different in different universities. But in this one, the one that I applied for, I was able to pass. But I remember in my heart willing to be a journalist. Mm. or willing to be and when I was even younger younger when I was small I wanted to be a dancer mm. <laughs> like ballet and all of that but I, I live in a very small town so that was not a possibility and definitely when I remember wanting to you know become a um, journalist there wasn't a possibility either because it was just in private universities and it was very expensive um, and I wanted to become a journalist because I love writing in my in my own um, language. So I thought maybe that's a good option. But um, contradictory, the results of the national exam show results higher in physics, which was surprising for me because mm. I didn't think that I could be, you know, it's like an uh, opposite, opposite type of, you know, sciences and art or something like that. Um, so I spoke with the director. I was very confused of the school. And I said, what do you think that I, that I should do? That's what a teenager asked me in confusion. And he said, maybe you're good for engineering. Go and apply to that in university to engineering. And I was like, yeah, whatever. I go and apply to that. That's how my decision was made. Oh, wow. So I applied to engineering and I became an engineer. <laughs> wow. And that is when happen what happens when you just don't have limitations but now what is super beautiful is that i realized wow that decision was not even like a formal objective decision as traditionally we we learned that how start we make decisions it was kind of like the life decided for me and i feel that there is always wisdom in mm. that so that removes any stress that i was supposed to do this no what i am doing is the perfect thing that is for me at that moment Wow. Wow. Interesting. Uh, I like that perspective. Um, so, so how long, uh, so tell me after you graduated, you started working in South America as an engineer and yes. then, yeah. Tell me about that part of it. Yes. Uh, okay. I um, started working as an engineer and, um, even before I, um, graduated, I had the opportunity to um, go to a company and start taking my studies at night because they had that option. It's a very poor country, so sometimes towards the end in universities, they allow that uh, possibility. Uh, so I had to work um, the whole day and then go back and continue my studies. Um, but I was also lucky that I was able to find a job a little bit related, like related with engineering, actually. Um, so. Uh, it was with the government. Um, it was like an entry job in engineering. And um, yeah, it was um, interesting for me to see what type of challenges I could encounter in this uh, position now, believing myself that I am an engineer. <laughs> when, you know, like in all of this um, journey, we discovered that uh, 
even switching from engineering to let's say that I want to become a dancer and I go and you know take studies or whatever and I want to become or I decided no I want to become a writer whatever we discover that those are personalities that we have imposed in ourselves and we believe that we are that so at this point it's a little bit sometimes difficult for me to say what are you doing because everybody asks right like who are you like what are you doing so I kind of I have to say yeah I'm an engineer but inside I'm saying okay don't worry you're not you're not an engineer like I don't I I, I learn to get myself out of identification mm. with professions or with labels because I discovered that it was a way for me to allow me to be myself simply myself embrace everything that the life brings me and uh, enjoy any position that you know in any adventure that i get to be involved enjoy to the maximum without thinking i'm not supposed to be doing that no just loving it oh, so that's, yeah that's so, really good that's really powerful actually i just had a conversation with a friend last night about this very thing about you know how we think we have to focus on one area and that we're spent and that is who we are or what we do and it's very hard to explain to other people what like for instance what I do it's like you know yeah I'm in I'm in a software engineer but I also am a musician and I'm also a podcast and I also like writing and I also like you know tons of things and that's me I'm, yeah I, I, I call it I kind of have ADHD like life skills. <laughs> I'm interested in everything. Um, and, and I feel like, um, we, we kind of ended our conversation talking about flow and how it's all about the flow of life and the energy. And you don't worry about trying to box it up or label it or understand it. Just be in the flow. If you feel, you know, we're all very creative people, no matter what our titles are, or what our jobs are. And so just being in that flow of like, following where things lead you and being in that the moments that happen um and then just just letting them happen and then you know down the road you you see see what it is but it's it's not really as important to define it i think yeah, so sure. yeah so yeah i i was um you know performing this uh, job engineering i was you know feeling yeah okay i'm an engineer i continue with my my job and my my career but then there was this opportunity to come to Canada and I said okay maybe it's an opportunity for me to go and find a job in a country that is more you know econo um, the economy is stronger than in this country and maybe the perspectives and the opportunities could be better so I'm gonna go and try and also I wanted to learn English so I came here to learn English first of all but of course there was a big challenge because the English that I took in the university, I discovered here that wasn't enough. So mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, it's kind of like, I, I kind of managed, but when I came here, I didn't understand anything. So it was uh, challenging and uh, I, I had to wait many years to become an engineer in Canada. And that was not expected. So because the life again shifted me <laughs> to all of this, I learned to once again, discovered okay maybe in the meantime I can do any other thing and by these circumstances that happened to me I learned that uh, actually skills that I thought that I never had there was a, um, a possibility with the government for immigrants to take finance uh, but this was for people more related with you know like the financial administration and all of that and I applied because um, you know, I come from a very poor country and I said, I have to, you know, succeed no matter what and do whatever is in front of me. I'm going to take, I'm going to apply. Like, what, what's the problem? Like, it doesn't matter. I'm an engineer, but it doesn't matter. I like, I, I like to learn about that actually. So I went, applied and I passed. <laughs> so I was like even surprised that I passed. And um, yeah, I ended up studying finance. And um, uh, when I finished, I ended up working. This is incredible because I never in my life thought before that I was going to be able to have a sales job. <laughs> so I ended up working in a bank and as a financial advisor. <laughs> so that's beautiful. Now that I see it, it's so beautiful because I can see, you know, these transitions and different identities. So this time I was a financial advisor mm -hmm. and I enjoy that job. I enjoy 
a lot the interaction with the clients. It was so awesome. People asking me, where are you from? And what is your degree? They, I said many times, I'm an engineer. Oh, what are you doing here? Engineers here do well, and blah, blah, blah. I knew that I wasn't still qualified to become an engineer because it requires a process and I had to go back to university. So I was still kind of like assessing my possibilities. In the meantime, I was just, you know, fulfilling my role as a full financial advisor. And then I had a baby. And then again, I knew mm, this is going to shift again <laughs> mm. because I wanted to be a mom. But I didn't know at that point, okay, so how come now that Oof, all of these difficult decisions because I want to be a mom, but I also want to be a career woman. I want to be a professional. Mm -hmm. And it plays again um, like an assessment, internal assessment of how I am going to solve this. <laughs> uh, so then at the end of the maternity leave, I just didn't go back to work. But uh, during the maternity leave, I studied and I became an interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> This is yeah, amazing. So many things. So, I, I, I love, let me just, I love your process that it's very logical and just like, okay, this is what I need. And like, let me, let me figure out like, how can I make this work? I mean, did you have like, did you write down like pros and cons or write down, I mean, did you have like any sort of a system you used to navigate these changes or did you just kind of go with your gut and like see that what was out there? I think that um part and part because in engineering my mind is very structured right with methods and systems and mm -hmm. i'm all about that like naturally methods and systems so I, I think that i performed like certain analysis where what would be the worst that can happen if i do this okay i would i be prepared for that and then there is another part of intuition that is sometimes easily i just don't know how to explain it but it's like let's take the risk Let's mm. see what happens. Yeah. We're going to manage. And also, mm. it may be a little bit of influence from my traditional background with the, you know, Christianity and the Catholic is that you learn to have faith, a lot of faith, mm. and believing that there is something like God or something that is guiding you. So I always say, oh, God is going to help me. Like somehow this is going to pass. Mm -hmm. So so both, I guess, that is that I used to assess those um risks or situations where I'm not sure how to make the decision. And anyways, at the end of the day, for that particular one, I, I thought, I want to fulfill this role now of a mom. So that became a priority. And I said, it's okay, somehow I'm going to manage. Um, so I, I, the interpreting job, it was more per hour. So it allowed me more flexibility to be with the kid. And in the meantime, I prepare and I also prepare with all the documentation and process that I needed to apply to the Association of Engineers to be to get the accreditation. Because that became at some point for me like I I am the type of person that it's like I don't have a rest until I see it there. <laughs> so I said, I know this is very difficult and I don't have the money, but this is gonna happen somehow. And somehow it happened, it's incredible. I, you know, gathered the documentation, applied, and like one year later, I was uh, in the university taking the classes, the extra classes, and I got the accreditation from the university. And still, I didn't have a job. It took me years, and uh, I thought with the accreditation now, here in Canada, I'm done, like they are gonna give me a job. I applied to many jobs, no, nothing. <laughs> Mm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been an experience of, yeah, okay, I, I'm going to do whatever. There is one that I forgot to mention and is that when I was doing interpreting, because I had my background from the bank, I also assessed what could be something that I can do from home that is more flexible and during my uh, taking the classes in the university that can allow me to, um, be you know like have some income and at the same time uh, stay with the kid and be all of this and uh, I use the knowledge from the finance industry to become a mortgage broker so I also started to yeah. have some clients that way and became a, a mortgage broker and that helped me and um, I've been kind of like 
not false, but the life have, have shown me, like it has been unfolded in that way. And I understand that the purpose is to realize of that I am not this or that. The mm. purpose, that's why the life has been showing me so many, you know, like mm. the, uh, circumstances. And I know that is, it's because of that. That's what I feel. Just so I understand that you're identified with all of this, but remember that at the end of the day, you're known of that. Mm. So that's good. I like that. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, um, was able, uh, eventually I got the job. Um, okay. I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit of my, my personal life. This, that was important. My relationship became very, very, uh, complicated. Uh, there were many, I saw myself in many situations where I said, we were, we were arguing a lot with my partner and my life, I was feeling my life going like in a, like in a hole. Um, I had a lot of depression and uh, sadness. I didn't have, you know, in this country, my fa no family, no friends and uh, difficulties for me to actually get a job or feel that I was fulfilling that career in the way that I wanted or that I had in Colombia because I, I had a good position in Colombia. I became the director of quality management and it was a very important position. So it was hard for me to, you know, come in here mm -hmm. and deal with all of that. But um, I, I came to the point where I was so broken inside that I said, I don't want this, this future for my kid. And uh, I come from parents that stayed all their life together. They are still together. It was a very, very difficult mental um, concept for me to break that. And also because I come from a traditional, uh, mm -hmm. you know, culture uh, to feel that how I'm going to say that I'm separated now. If, if that's not the goal for my life, that's not what I wanted. Um, but I had to go through that. I separated and I saw myself with a two-year-old kid, separated, no job this time, and uh, no, no family or friends. But again, I don't know from where exactly I, I got, you know, like the strength to, to cope with all of this. But somehow um, I just uh, decided to continue believing in the middle of the sadness, continue believing, okay, something is going to be there, something is going to be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went back to college <laughs> and took, um, because it was difficult for me to get that engineering job that I wanted. I, again, look for ways <laughs> for, for me to get that. So um, I found that after taking some technology level, um, courses or actually the, the certificate, I would be able to go to an internship. And mm. in the internship, most companies retain, you know, the, yes. the interns. So mm -hmm. that's what I did. I went through the whole process and I uh, got a job with the government. And that's how I became, like, actually got uh, to become an engineer here in Canada. And the mm. job was great. And my life started to change in a different way again. You know, the life goes always kind of like ups and downs. So then I started to feel this is going up again. That's great. <laughs> so I have to prepare better the next time. So when I go down now, I am more, you know, like stronger than ever. And um, that that happened. And one day I was in, in that inter internship and I met a guy. Um, I had to work my, my career is in or basically I was working, I'm an industrial engineer, but I was working as a civil engineer and it's another shift. <laughs> and uh, I met a gentleman in a hotel because they sent, sent us to different locations and he was telling me about his life and stuff. And this gentleman told me, have you ever read a book that is called um, uh, the power of the subconscious mind or something like that. And I said, no, he said, oh, okay, that, that would be, be uh, you know, like useful for you, the life that you do you tell me because I was telling him my life. And then I started to read the book and I became like a little bit inspired to, yeah, I think that the universe is not the way that we were taught that it is. So there must be something magical outside that I am still missing. And because I started to change that, that perspective like yeah maybe there is something else there is something else i my life started to change 
And uh, later on, I met my husband now. Uh, it's like the way that I can describe him is like he's like an angel. <laughs> like he, he's the person that I imagine in my dreams, how it would be the perfect man for me. I remember that one day I even wrote down how it would be. And he is that, like now when I read it's like, wow, it's incredible how patient, how kind is he is. Mm. So, and yeah, so um, when we had the second kid, I um, realized I cannot do the same things that happened the first time. I want to be able to uh, inspire other women with my own story through uh, this project that I had, that is, I have to demonstrate to me, you know, that I have the skills to be able to share this amazing opportunity of having a kid and being sharing every stage with this kid and it still become, you know, like a, like a um, professional mm -hmm. woman and apply my, my knowledge, expertise and life experiences and everything. So that's how, um, everything else got created in terms of the business and with the support of course of my husband and uh, it's been amazing and I still do work for the government and I happen to do all of this uh, from home so um, I'm very you know like happy that um, it's not that it's just my situation is that when we see everything else in, in the universe, I feel like separated from us, we create that separation. Therefore, we feel that we have to compare with others and feel that we have to be here or there. Um, but when I realize that, no, that's not the way. Like if we think in, in the holding as, as a unity, if I, I say, if I was able to do this, it's not that I am just the example, but it's also what the other people can see and expect the same because we are all basically one in this, you know, like a story or this uh, projection that exists that we see as the world. I love that. I love that so much. Um, one of the things that when you were talking about um, that your husband was this, you know, what you had envisioned, um, I think it's so powerful, the things that we really want, like that we write out and that we have these visions that we speak to it or write it or, um, or pay attention to our dreams about it. Um, because we really, we really do end up manifesting what we project. And, and I think that the more that we can be in touch with ourselves and heal and, and have these like beautiful, you know, projections that they do come true. I mean, it gives us a lot of hope to the rest of us who are still waiting. <laughs> yes, and, and, the beautiful, and the beautiful thing is that, what, like, as I said, I think that one of the problems that I was having is that I compare to other pe myself to other people, and I want what the other people is having. So this, you know, the society, the norms, the traditions, the culture says, in my case, uh, it's good to finish a career, it's good to to uh, be married, it's good to have the kids, it's good to, you know, but, but it's because I'm comparing with what I see outside, but I'm ignoring what the life is maybe showing for me. So if the life shows for me maybe that I cannot have kids, for example, that is the, I, I am not seeing still the, the perfection or the gift that it brings. Mm -hmm. If I am still in at war, uh, you know, like in contradiction or conflict with why I don't have kids and I suffer because I don't have kids, I'm missing the opportunity to see, oh, wh what is happening? Like, if I'm not having them, what, what is what I am missing from this gift? For sure. You know? Yeah, yeah, because you have all of that energy and time and like there, there's reasons for everything. And, you know, I really do believe that. And, um, for me particularly, I don't have children. And so um, I have definitely done that shift over time where it's been like, mm -hmm. well, I don't, but then I have my creative babies, 
and I, you know, have the things that I create and I have the friendships or I have, like I create, there's a reason for it Mm -hmm. um, because I'm supposed to be able to travel in a camper across the country and meet people or, you know, so I feel like, um, yeah, just kind of, I love that philosophy or, or mindset of just like going with life rather than trying to struggle and and be like no this is the picture i had in mind and this is what they're doing and so if i'm not doing this then i'm failing and that's so many people do that and it's so self-destructive and they're missing out on all of the wonderful things that they have to bring to this world to bring to others so i love that yeah (laughs) i i also love what you're saying it's absolutely beautiful i even feel that i'm gonna cry <laughs> because it's like you see that what happens the beauty of all of this that we get to connect for a reason and it becomes like a ritual through these yes. words because we feel like if we were souls like you know twin souls we understand in that deeper level of how the life is doing and we love what you say i love what you say you love what i what i say and it's the same for the listener there is a special reason why you are listening to this. And so embracing everything that comes has been the life changer for me. And actually it changed my life because I shift the way that I was thinking about those things and in the suffering, continuing the suffering of why I don't have this, why I don't have this, why I cannot be that, why I cannot be that. And when I started to change that, then I feel like a million dollar lady living in this a small house, it's all perfect. I can see in the eyes of these beautiful kids every day. And I'm like, I don't change money or anything for this opportunity that is infinitesimal because at the next second, it's, it's gone. Mm. So how magical is that, that I have that beautiful opportunity? So that is in the same transitions that we have in careers, you know, in dreams, in it's all perfect in the way that it is. Like you could have spent that whole time that all of those years you were waiting to be the engineer, to be in Canada working as an engineer. You could have spent that whole time being negative and upset and feeling like you'd made a mistake and that, you know, all of the things. And instead you created all of these different careers and connections and continued your own personal growth that brought you where you're at now. And I think that's such a powerful, not only like it's, it's such a powerful message for me, um, as I am also like navigating like unknown changes and just embracing it. And like, I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm, I'm going with it. Um, and I hope the listeners understand that too. Like we don't always know exactly where a path is going to end up, but we have to have faith and just trust it and just take the steps and go Mm -hmm. forward because there is such a beautiful life. There's so much more than, than what we think in our limited vision. Like, you know, we really have to open ourselves up and take the leaps. And uh, okay. so I, I just love that. That's so, it's so exciting. Yes, I learned this um, going more like deeper and deeper in my own journey. I discovered that I might, of course, as we know, we might die tomorrow. We always want to avoid this topic, death. Mm-hmm. But I think that for me, because I'm a very curious person, always wondering about this very thing, this very thing of the, what is death and why human beings have to die. Mm-hmm. Because I develop attachment for the people who I am around with, sure. right? Like for my family. So then I become afraid when I think, what if they were not here with me? What would happen to me? So thinking about this topic of death I and analyzing my journey, I realized also that even though I want to, I like to build something beautiful and make an impact, none of that makes sense when I put everything in perspective for what is happening now. Because what if I die tomorrow and I miss the opportunity to enjoy this very moment that I'm here saying these words. Mm. So that's how I... I, I, I go kind of like day by day without so much stress of I'm getting the goals that I want or the methods or the hacks or the tips or the strategies or everything that the life could be, uh, you know, uh, confusing. Um, I, I do the strategy. I do the things that I know from my engineering, from my expertise, but I enjoy them when I am doing them without worrying about if I, where it's going to take me. Um, I used to 
you know, stress that why I didn't start this sooner or why I didn't do this, but that is, when I'm thinking that why I didn't do that, I'm missing the moment of the present moment. <laughs> so, so learning that simple concept was so beautiful for me. And I said, yes, this is how the life should be undertaken. I can die tomorrow and I didn't get to enjoy this present for being thinking in the future that never comes. So this is what it is and it's beautiful. It is so true. And that's something I have to remind myself like on a daily basis to tap into sometimes. Um, and part of what I love about camper, like RV lifestyle, because um, it forces you like, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go outside of my camper and I'll look out over the creek or see the light changing in the leaves or just sit and feel the breeze and smell what's around me. And like, take that moment of like, wait, you're here right now. Just don't worry about all that yeah. stuff, uh -huh. all of the pressures, all of the lists, all of the, just, just recognize where you're at now. Because mm -hmm. I think that like, we're all doing these hustles, right? We all have mm -hmm. like one or two or three jobs. We've got all these roles and these things that we're doing. And I feel like every day there's never enough time in the day for me to do not only the work I want to do, but also mm -hmm. like I want to read and I want to explore and I, I want to fill myself up. And it's really hard to just get everything done. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to be, to pressure yourself and be more of that perfectionist mentality and try to like get it all done and hurry, 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 hurry. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then, yeah, you miss out on the beautiful moments, the butterfly that floats by or the, you know, just yeah. those, those things. So, um, Mm -hmm. I definitely have to push back a lot on a daily basis with my own self because I definitely, um, I have to remind myself to be kinder and to, to really embrace the moments, embrace the now. Like it doesn't, if it doesn't all get done, if it's not perfect, it's okay. And, um, if no, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's a real, that's a really important, important thing that I, I hope that um, that makes sense to our listeners too. But Yeah, we always feel that we are going somewhere. <laughs> but the reality from my engineering, as I explain uh, education, let's say, uh, I've been always very curious in, in sciences too. So when we take a, a little read about, in general, about the concepts or the theory uh, explaining quantum physics, it seems that that and neuro, neuroscience can explain together with being a, sep, a little bit separate type of sciences, how, try to explain how the universe, you know, this, um, that we believe that is an objective universe is actually a subjective one and that everything is happening, you know, or evolving and unfolding at the very moment. So that make us believe like there is a time and a space, especially time that is what we are discussing right now, that we feel that there is a tomorrow, but it's just a way that the mind can get to understand all the situations that seems to be happening all at the same time. This is a very complex uh, co kind of concept to understand from the science point of view, and also from a, you know, like a normal rational point of view, but it seems that it is how how it works that's what the science is, is discovering right now and it happens to be which is not a coincidence that one of the most ancient books from buddhism says that that there is no self and there is no other and that therefore there is no time and there is no space so all the whole thing is like a projection that's why i used that word before so in terms of that, if, when we get to understand that there is no that tomorrow, actually, like ob objectively, we think that it is because it's a mental process that is happening, but it's not like that. When we get to understand that, or at least that is what helped me, then I drop my attachment to the things that I am expecting tomorrow to happen. Mm -hmm. Because the reality is that I can get in the car and just going around the corner get into an accident and die so um, no there is no need to 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 stress i there are things that i want obviously because i'm still in this you know trap in this um, uh, like mind uh, it, there is a conscious thing that is it seems that is like thinking or feeling that is inside this this body apparently but we know that is not the case but 
um, still in this, uh, you know, form of existence that I seem that I am, um, I, 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 I still project things. I, I kind of still project and think uh, I want to live more because I want to see my kids grow <laughs> because I, I want to continue attachment, right? We are all, all, all human beings in this, all the same, absolutely like rich, poor, successful, not successful, all is reduced when it's seen through the eyes of wisdom are uh, the same. And so all the journeys are exactly the same. It's not different journeys. It's just one journey into that discovery that there is no that tomorrow, that the whole thing is just real when it's here and it's present. So no, there is no business in reality. I'm doing it because it's fun. So I'm, I, now I em em embrace it from that perspective. I'm doing all of this because it's a journey. So what is going to be the next step? How am I going to react? How this human being is going to undertake that and see the process of the human being doing that? But um, inside, I know that there is not an actual tomorrow, that the whole thing is, is just this now and this is the only reality. <laughs> Yeah, I think that it's it's really hard for people like it's a control issue. I think that, you know, we want to control our, our outcomes and we project what we think mm -hmm. will happen tomorrow because yeah, we know what's the past so we can we can obsess on the past um, and then we can sort of project into the future. But we're not very good about actually just being present and mm -hmm. and it's really embrace. It takes um, a great amount of embracing unknown and being just okay with not knowing like just and just embracing each moment as it mm -hmm. comes as it manifests and just seeing you know going from there and that's a really that's really counter to our culture and it's really hard for people to understand but even in the bible uh you know jesus says at one point i, I don't know, remember the scripture but you know don't don't worry about tomorrow tomorrow has enough worries in itself and it's like mm -hmm. it's that same concept of like there's no reason for us to even worry or project about tomorrow it's gonna it has its own life and when yeah. you get there you'll live it but it may not even be there it might be here it's actually here exactly. but, so yeah it's a uh, yeah, that's really, really interesting. Okay, so I definitely want to dig into your business, though, as you're talking mm -hmm. about this. Um, I, I just, um, quickly, I'm going to say, as uh, just to kind of like join this with my last um, um, comment about the engineering, and then I decided to create this because it's part of all my experience and my knowledge, and my main experience that I had in my country was with the small business owners. Um, I work with the government um, by creating, you know, the implementation systems related with lean practices, quality management, and all of this. So I, after, or actually during my time working with the government, the, um, the part of the government where I was working was working towards a certification in quality management. And then I got to meet one of the uh, uh, auditors from another company. So with this auditor, um, he had a company, a small company, and he asked me if I wanted to work also for him. So I started doing that and, and going to small business owners and working in the implementation of systems. I worked with that and I also, at the time, well, I enjoyed that a lot because I had to go on, you know, um, do a speaking, teaching like how the principles can be applied, how the actual regulations work, and the, the strategies and the tools that are all around the quality management. And now coming, you know, to, to the what I did is that I create, like I use all of that knowledge that I had and my experience. And I realized that, or, or before I say that, I have to say one of the best changes that I made in my life was to adopt a lifestyle that is called minimalism. Mm. So I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but the philosophy about minimalism is that less is more. And it's based on the fact that the less we have, the more we can find enjoyment in ourselves and in the surrounding that we are. I definitely so, uh, embrace that because I live right now temporarily in a 21 foot trailer <laughs> so yes, it's yes, very I small and it's yes. like yeah yeah so it's perfect yeah that's why uh, yeah i love when i i hear about you because uh, minimalism is all about this you know tiny living tiny tiny housing and all of these things and and that's how 
I am. I wanted to to give it a try and it changed my life again completely in the sense of how organized I became and more structured and more uh, finding more, as I said, fulfillment, not placing the fulfillment in material things Mm -hmm. uh, as I did before. I got to a point where I accumulated a lot of stuff in the house, one of the houses that we had, and it came at some point like unbearable, like having many stuff, the garage full of, you know, tools, gadgets, things, the kitchen with many tools, uh, toys, oof, because with the first kid, like, it's <laughs> unbelievable. And it was painful for me the pro- to go through a process of streamlining. It was very painful, like, having, all, spending hours and hours and hours getting rid of stuff and selecting stuff that I said, this is not going to happen again to me. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this with love. And uh, this mm-hmm. is, this is going to be a question of the past and I'm going to learn from this. And also so, I love that you say with love because mm-hmm. it's, it is this process of minimal minimalism of practicing this. It doesn't come easy and you have to love yourself and love your, th- you know, it. you have to be kind to yourself because it is, anxiety producing to Mm -hmm. let go of things that you've had Mm -hmm. around you for and but the but what you find is the more you do it the better you're at and the more things you see that you don't need and the more you like continue the process but like at first it's kind of like oh no there's no way I can get rid of that vase like that's been here forever (laughs) like or whatever it is and like um or, or books. I used to have a lot more books than I do now. And so, you know, things like that, you start to, it really does help. Um, I find give you a more fluid feeling about life that like, Mm -hmm. okay, if something happens and these things go away, I will be okay because I'm not so attached. You know, I love them. I appreciate them, but Mm -hmm. it's, it's okay. I'm okay. But, uh, anyway, yeah. The the journey is so beautiful. I, I really encourage anyone you want to make some changes in your life. You want to save money. That's what I say in my social media <laughs> stories sometimes or account. Do you want to save money? Do you want to, which everybody wants. <laughs> uh, do you want to save time? Everybody wants that. I'm going to give you the secret is uh, establish a minimalist type of life and you will see how your life is going to change. And it's totally true. I did it. It's my truth and it works. And, um, but now, when I compare, I started to analyze the, the journey is so beautiful because I started to analyze and compare the systems that I learned as an engineer and that I was advising companies to implement in their businesses. And they were all based on what is called lean practices. Mm-hmm. And lean is the same system, the same uh, philosophy of a minimalist you know, lifestyle. So for me, it just made sense to create a minimalist business sure. <laughs> and, you know, to create kind of like the, 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 all the strategies that are, that come actually from a strategic management, which are these type of strategies that big businesses, big companies um, ap- apply for, for them to, you know, grow and, and become stable. But now with this minimalist business, um, um, Type, this type of strategies to bring them to small businesses, which is a little bit of what I did in my country. Um, just that I just that I don't necessarily um, say this is this engineering system. Um, it's just that I want to give a little bit of life to this. It's not just a tool, you know, like a model there. It has to make sense and also bring life to that. And that's why I call it a minimalist business. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was inspired uh, primarily from my own experience as a lifestyle, but it's brought from that to businesses because I can see that businesses, as I worked with them before, uh, struggle a lot with finding that stream, streamline uh, way to produce better results with less resources. Mm-hmm. So, so we get caught up like, we, we don't track things. We, we get caught up with so many, you know, technology or um, gadgets or um, um, guidelines or things that for trying to be, to be learning so many of those things, we don't accomplish, mm-hmm. you know, one thing. So the method is basically in general, um, this, the, the, um, it just describes a, a general process where the idea is to realize of what processes and procedures you have in your business and then um, being able to um, do 
create like create like a list of those processes and get rid of all the inefficient activities that are not producing value towards that profitability that you want. And uh, we, when we don't analyze that, it's like when we are going in ourselves, when mm -hmm. we see that all the things are outside and we just do them without being conscious, it's the same parallel that I find. When we have the business and we don't analyze how we are undertaking all of these activities, we can be doing things that are not pro um, providing value to the actual goal. So oh, yeah, we have to get sure. rid of that just like as we declare, declare the house. I, exactly. I same. find um, I struggle with that a lot um, because obviously I don't have a lot of time with all of, you know, full-time job and doing all the things. And sometimes, sometimes I find the best way to figure out where you're wasting time or money is all time box. I'll say I have this task to do, but I only have a half an hour or an hour to get, mm -hmm. you know, this day or this week to do this thing. And if I can't do it within that time, it really forces you to realize, well, okay, I need to reevaluate, you know, what, how am I doing this? What are the steps I'm going about? Is there a better way? Is there someone else that could do it for me? Um, or whatever, but you start to, mm -hmm. you start to have to yeah, figure out sure. because, you know, you get to a point where this is your life, right? This is our life. Mm -hmm. This is our one life. Mm -hmm. And are we going to spend it being inefficient and wasting and being stressed out and, mm -hmm. you know, losing all that time and energy, or are we going to focus and make it more, the most productive that we can? Mm -hmm. And, um, that's yeah. why actually the blueprint, the core is to the creation of a business is of course it has that goal, right? Like to create some profit, even if it's a non-profit, it needs some profit to run. So there is a goal that is clear, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm still working on that part, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so it's go with the ultimate goal in mind that we can create that opportunity or freedom, you know, for ourselves mm -hmm. that we don't, get stress in activities that are, or put value or attention in activities that are not producing value. So get rid of what is not serving you. And then it goes into creating some, at least basic key performance indicators, because it's the way to, for you to measure your processes and know what is working and what is not working. And at the end is um, like the implementation of, you know, like actions that can help you to restore a result of, let's say that you said that you wanted to um, decrease the number of errors from designs that have to be reprocessed. Uh, so that indicator, let's say that gave you a result of 60% and the expectation was at least 90%. So then by seeing numbers and seeing something, you know, like objective that at least you can make better decisions and take action promptly and, uh, in that way, that is when we get to apply what is called continuous improvement, which is that if we want to create something that ha that should be going towards, you know, growth and 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 um, and to sustain that growth, that is, in my opinion, and as part of my um, expertise and my um, you know education that I've had and experience with businesses is that uh, that is um, a way to do it. If you're not tracking what we're doing, um, we, we cannot know exactly how to improve. But as I say, this is uh, with the idea of being minimal mm -hmm. uh, and to have just the activities that make sense. So as it seems, oh, wow, another implementation or so of something is actually the method that you need to make things streamlined yeah simple. yeah it it may seem daunting at first to have to go through the process of it but the process is to streamline your process yes, like so exactly. <laughs> yeah. yes that's my explanation <laughs> so yes. is this something that um, people can sign up i mean how do people work do they work with you do you work with people one-on-one -on -one? do you have i don't know much about your actual mm -hmm. platform or your actual structure yeah uh, i just uh, i'm working right now one-on-one -on -one because okay. This implementing this, it's very specific for every business and creating something that is general would be like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually towards the creation of a, something like a framework mm -hmm. that can be more general, but uh, the most, the most, the most value I feel is going to be when 
there is an actual process of analyzing the particulars of every business, which is different for everybody. And uh, I, um, I'm working in, in a couple of uh, courses that I want to take outside for free and it's to help anybody. Um, I don't, um, I'm in the editing process, but one is that right now in this world, you know, even if we don't like, it's sort of important to put ourselves outside if we want to have a business and say, hey, this is me and that's how I can help you. Um, and it requires sometimes to be able to express ourselves in front of a camera, which is not an easy process, or at least that is what happened for me. Mm -hmm. I had to go through a, a, like a long process in order to be comfortable speaking on camera. Mm -hmm. But and once I found a couple of, you know, like points there that resonated with me or that I discovered, um, I was able to remove those limitations and do it. So now I'm creating a little course. Of course, all of this is for free, um, where I teach how to get comfortable in camera so you can get to, you know, show your, your amazing creation. You can have an amazing idea there, you, an amazing creation, which it is for sure. But how do you show it? You know, yes. sometimes oh, some that. people or some, sometimes we are unconfident and uh, I'm creating that course also to help people. And another one is in the financials, like how to get your financials in track. Because now you know that I work in a, in a bank and mm -hmm. I study finance. So I can help people in terms of that. And it's just so they can, if they are having the idea of having a business, I think that these tools are useful. Oh, it sounds great. And something I might, I might be interested in as well myself, because mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to negotiate, to navigate. There's a lot to navigate when you have, yeah. <laughs> in the online world. It's very yes. yellow, and the technology moves super fast that we can barely catch up with every single thing that is new out there that is, everybody seems to be doing and we are like, oh, what the heck? I'm, yes. I'm not even doing it. I don't even know how that works. Yes. So that's why I'm creating all of that for free. And I love it. Like it's not, not like I'm for me any strategy or particular thing for, no, I just, just feel that it's, um, it's beautiful to, you know, being able to do something that is useful for someone. It's like with my minimalist, um, process um, mm -hmm. that I went through, I decided, many people decide to put the stuff on, you know, uh, this um, reseller type of websites or, you know, resell the stuff. Mm -hmm. I said, no, no, I think that all of this stuff is going to be super useful for someone else. Mm -hmm. So no, I'm not going to get attached to, to that. So in that terms, uh, in those terms, I'm not super attached to, you know, give me my knowledge and I'm going to charge right now for that. I want to be able to create something beautiful that people can get a lot of value without any expectation. Oh, oh yeah. And the thing is, is that whatever you're really passionate about and you put out there, the money will follow in some yes. form, like yes. you'll be taken care of. Yes. I really believe that. <laughs> but I do believe that if you go into something and I've heard this from multiple people I've interviewed, if you are thinking, if you're going into something for the money, you're going to be really disappointed and you're not going to last. Mm -hmm. But if you go into it out of your passion, that, you know, the money or whatever, all of that abundance will follow. It will yeah. just happen naturally. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, I think that that's really important. But how mm -hmm. can how can people find you? What's the best way? Yes, I think um, I invite people to see how, like, I, I create now a lot more content than before because I like to express all the stuff that I have and my experiences and these, these thoughts that I share with you, I share this stuff in social media too. So the easiest way to introduce each other <laughs> is on social media and in all the platforms, Twitter, LinkedIn, even TikTok, <laughs> um, and Facebook, Instagram, all the platforms, I'm as Diana Olenik. And so, yes, that's an easy way. And um, my website is programs that so that is an easy way yes and i like to all, always create more you know that connection that opportunity for people to see who i am how i think and uh yeah like have um have a have a test and uh the opportunity to interact each other and meet each other and so also, i like social media in that sense 
Okay, great. Yeah, I will. I will include all of the links in the show notes. Um, and you also have a podcast as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. what, what's the title of that? The podcast is called The Alchemia Success Show. And the word alchemia is actually in English, the word alchemy. So alchemy stands for transformation. So I like to showcase these success stories of women having their businesses because it was at some point for me just a dream, just like you, like a, like the title of your podcast and how they made it real. <laughs> so this transformation is, um, that's basically the name of the podcast, but it's al alchem alchemia. Alchemia is alchemy in Spanish. So, um, um, and also success, because although everybody thinks that success is something that you can get, it's kind of like the word almost implies success is there in the future. Nobody knows, may, not many people know. Uh, I always ask in my, in my podcast, what is your definition of success? And the purpose, and interestingly enough, many people have came like to say in the, their conclusion is that success is something that we already have. <laughs> so it's mm. beautiful, even though we kind of initially think in success is something when I am, you know, have this money or have these expectations, but many people, if not all, have realized and said right there at the moment when I asked that question, success is, is, is um, now, it's happening. It's now, now. yeah, success is now. So it's beautiful because that. um, that's, that's why um, the, the name of the podcast was in order to extract from them what are their secrets to success. But mm. what is beautiful that the life is showing again is, hey, the success is now. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I'm... I love that. That's so cool. I was wondering about that word and how all of that played together. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. So the, the podcast, of course, is available in all the platforms or in the most um, you know, uh, popular ones that is Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Pocket Casts, Anchor. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I mean, I would, I could talk to you for a very long time. This has been so much fun um, yeah. and just really inspiring for me. Thank you. It's exactly what I needed today. And uh, mm. so, um, but I was wondering, did you happen to have a quote that you'd like to share? Maybe a favorite quote or a quote mm -hmm. that like recently is just like your quote that you're, that you love. Mm -hmm. I think that in the spirit of minimalism and um, because all my, my idea and uh, framework that I'm creating around businesses also with the principles of minimalism, my favorite phrase actually in life also is that the le less is more. Because in, in my own life, even not just speaking about life, that lifestyle or, or that business side, um, I've discovered that um, the less I worried about, as we discussed, future control, expectations, and even trying to get into an idea or concept that satisfies my mind into what is this reality. Even, you know, like that, we discover that the less we think even in those big questions, philosophical questions, the more we are aligned more with that reality without understanding, you know, a concept. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, that is my truth. Less is more. That's great. And it's so minimalist in itself. Yes. <laughs> I love it. It's perfect. Yes, yes, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, Diana, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It's been a pleasure talking with you. And um, I'm going to share all of your information out with everyone. Uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time to be on Flipping Dreams. And thank I wish, you very much. I wish you so much success with everything. Um, thank you. Yeah, I, as yes. I have no doubt that you are going to achieve all of your goals, even the goals you don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Diana. Have a beautiful evening. Thank you very much. You too. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed my chat with Diana and that you are inspired as well to get minimal and uh, repurpose things in your life and figure out what direction you want to go in. Uh, and I have included 
in the show notes ways to reach out and connect with Diana, um, her resources, and, and I hope that this helps you on your journey. Thank you again for listening to Flipping Dreams. We'll see you back here next week.